It has been estimated by the National Institutes of Health here in the United States that 80% of women will have a fibroid at some point in their life. Now, many of these women don't ever know because they don't have any symptoms, but if you've been diagnosed with a fibroid, then you know that there can be symptoms and these symptoms can be quite severe. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician with 20 years of clinical experience. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you about some little known or forgotten science that can help you reverse, shrink your fibroids without having to resort to surgery or some other procedure. Uterine fibroids go by several different names. They can be called fibroids, they can be called leomyomas, they can be called myomas, uterine myomas, or fibromas, but they all amount to the same thing. One of your muscle cells in the smooth muscle lining in the middle of your uterine wall gets a wild hair. And many doctors will tell you, we don't know why that happens. Actually, there's some pretty compelling research as to why that happens and to what you can do to prevent it. Now, if you've been diagnosed with a, a uterine fibroid and you're having symptoms, uh, you know that they can be quite severe. They can range from heavy bleeding during your cycle, having a cycle that's longer than would be expected. You can have constipation if the fibroid is in the wrong place. You can have urinary incontinence or the inability to urinate, depending on where the fibroid is in your uterus. You can have pain in the or pressure in your pelvic cavity including pain with intercourse. None of these symptoms are fun and you could likely avoid them all by applying the scientific findings I'm gonna talk about later in this video. There are several groups of women who are much more likely to develop symptomatic fibroids and these include women who are overweight, obese, or morbidly obese. This includes African-American women this includes women eating a high glycemic index diet, and that's a clue to the research I'm gonna to talk to about momentarily that will help you understand how you can actually shrink your fibroids. Uh, if the earlier a woman started having periods, if you started having periods at a very early age, much earlier than the average, you are at increased risk. If you have not had children, you're actually at increased risk of developing a fibroid. And the, the more children that a woman has, that seems to be protective against having fibroids, but not 100%. So, so what's this about a high glycemic index diet greatly increasing your risk of having fibroids? And that's actually tied hand in hand with being uh, more obese, being more likely to have a fibroid, and many other things that go along with what I'm about to tell you. As I alluded to earlier, there are millions of women in the world who have a small fibroid within their uterine wall and they have no symptoms, they have no idea they have it, it doesn't cause any problems, it never turns into cancer, it's no big deal. It's actually considered ubiquitous or normal. So only if your fibroid is big enough to be causing you symptoms should you ever consider having a surgical procedure to remove it. That's why what I'm talking about in this video is so important because if you can shrink a symptomatic fibroid back down to this small size, it becomes a non-issue. You don't care that it's there. You have no symptoms. There's no danger from it. You get to move on with life as usual. Now, it's quite possible that you've never heard of the research I'm about to tell you about. And it's also uh, sadly unlikely that your doctor has heard about this research either. Most doctors will tell you that we don't know what causes fibroids or it's genetic or it's just uh, the unlucky luck of the draw. But from the looks of this research, that is not the case. What's going on with uterine fibroids is hyperinsulinemia. Now, so think about the risk factors overweight, obese, morbidly obese. They always have hyperinsulinemia. If you started having periods at a very young age, more than likely the reason you did that was because you were eating a high carbohydrate diet and you were chronically hyperinsulinemic. So could this all really come down to the diet that you eat? And so I think so, and I'm gonna 
put links to all the research down below because I know this is a uh, this claim is a little fantastic. So I'm going to link to all the research so that you can look over it and you can also print it out and share it with your doctor. Now, what I would like for you to do is realize that fibroids are never acutely dangerous. They never become cancerous. They are always benign. The symptoms that you're having, obviously you don't want, but before you pull the trigger and resort to a surgical procedure that always has possible complications, I want you to try a 90 day trial of what I'm about to tell you. When you go for years eating a high carbohydrate diet three times a day, and then typically with a high carbohydrate snack in between each meal and one before bedtime, what you're doing is you're keeping your blood sugar constantly spiking up and then going down, spiking up and then going down. Well, the carbohydrates in, in your food made it spike, but what made it go down? Insulin. When your pancreas detects a high level of blood insulin, it immediately secretes lots of insulin to bring that blood sugar back down to the normal level because having high blood sugar is dangerous. It's bad for your body and your pancreas knows this. So it secretes insulin to pull your blood sugar back down. But if you're eating basically six high carb meals a day, then you're spiking your blood sugar multiple times a day and that's keeping your insulin level chronically high. Now there may very well be a genetic, a little 1% genetic problem with some of the smooth mus muscle cells in your uterine wall. But that's not what causes fibroids. What causes fibroids is the chronic hyperinsulinemia that basically turns on the genetic trigger in these cells and makes them start to grow. A fibroid in your uterine wall is just a conglomeration of poorly formed muscle cells. That's what it is. And that's why it's never dangerous, but it can cause some rather concerning symptoms. So how can you change your diet in order to, first of all, reduce your risk of even forming fibroids ever in your life? But secondly, if you've already been diagnosed, how can you reverse them? How can you shrink your fibroids? It's highly likely that eating a low carbohydrate diet, like a ketogenic diet or a carnivore diet, is going to slowly shrink your fibroids over the coming months. Now, keep in mind, your fibroids did not form overnight. They took many, many months and usually years to get as big as they are, to get big enough to cause the symptoms that you're having. So they're not gonna go away overnight. It's gonna take a few months to help shrink those fibroids. So especially if you've already been to your doctor with symptoms and you've been diagnosed with a fibroid or, or two or three, and the doctor did an ultrasound, so your doctor actually knows how big they are. They measure them in millimeters. Try a 90-day trial of a low-carbohydrate diet, like a ketogenic diet or a carnivore diet. I predict that in three months' time, your symptoms will get better. And the reason your symptoms are getting better is because the uterine fibroids are shrinking because they don't have that constant signal from insulin, hey, you need to grow, hey, you need to get bigger. Because insulin is definitely has many growth hormone-like characteristics, especially with smooth muscle cells that have a tiny genetic defect in them. So I would predict that after three months of a ketogenic or a carnivore diet, you're gonna notice a great improvement in the pain, in the problems with urination, the constipation, the pain, the pressure, all that stuff's gonna be better. And then when you follow up with your doctor, say in three or six months, ask for them to repeat that ultrasound. And much to your doctor's surprise and much to your pleasure, your fibroids are gonna be substantially, measurably smaller. If you ask your doctor about this 90-day low-carb challenge to shrink your fibroids, your doctor's probably gonna say something along the lines of, uh, yeah, blood sugar and insulin has nothing to do with fibroids. It's all about your estrogen and progesterone. Then I want you to ask your doctor, well, doctor, is it true that chronically high levels of insulin can actually move my estrogen and progesterone in the wrong direction? At which point you'll see your doctor go, and, and what's happening is your doctor's flashing back to medical school and they're like, oh yeah, I seem to remember something about that. 
And then merely ask your doctor, is there any danger if I don't have the surgery? Am I, is it, am I gonna die? Is it, and your doctor will say, well, no, but I mean, you wanna get these things out of there. And then you'll say, well, give me 90 days to do this low carb challenge. And at the end of that 90 days, we'll repeat the ultrasound. If the fibroids are smaller and my symptoms are better, then we're gonna forget the surgical procedure. But if they're no better, then you've always got the surgical procedure waiting there as a last resort. Again, I put all the research studies in the links down in the show notes below. Uh, just as insurance, in case your doctor balks at this, you can actually print out these multiple research studies showing that insulin resistance, aka chronic hyperinsulinemia, skyrockets your risk of forming fibroids in your uterus, but also your risk of having really large uh, symptomatic fibroids. And so that way you can print these out and have a discussion with your doctor about this science. I hope this video helped a lot. If it did, please take a second and click that subscribe button and the little bell button right beside it so that the next time I reveal some forgotten science, you'll get a notification from YouTube. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.